You know, I'd been having trouble with velvet leaf, uh, cutworm, and uh, foxtail, and well, that's when the representative from Monsanto came out to my farm. He recommended a pre-emergent, inferral mixture of Lohr's band with atrazine in a tank mix, and I told him to get off my land. So when I was a little kid, I took the cushions off the sofa, and like I, I built a little fort out of the sofa cushions, and I called it my autonomous zone, and you know, no girls allowed, no parents allowed, just me, right? So my sister, she was, uh, she couldn't, she she couldn't go inside there, and there was no room for her anyways. Um, just me. And uh, so I, I spent some time in my, my little autonomous zone. And, um, but eventually it was lunchtime. So I, I, I called to my mom. I'm like, hey mom, you know, could you, could you make me a sandwich and bring it to me in my, you know, my autonomous zone? And uh, she said, uh, Steve, I mean, Greg, if you want lunch, you're gonna have to come out of there and I'm like, but uh, this this is this is my autonomous zone, you know, you know. And so she's like, look, we've got company coming over, so you're gonna have to put those sofa cushions back. And so I'm like, well, gee, okay. And then I had my uh, my lunch. So anyhow, it's July, and uh, that is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, so, whenever the weather gets warm, like, my nerd powers just activate even more. I think it's because all those years that I was a student, I looked forward to the summer. And, you know, going, what, from elementary school, uh, you know, we would have three-month summer vacations and I would be able to read any books that I wanted to not just the type of books that they wanted me to read for my book reports but you know like science fiction and all, all the books that I really wanted to read and you know in the early 80s we didn't have VCRs I mean like rich people did but my, my parents we didn't get a VCR until I was in junior high and that was like uh, maybe 88, 89 or so. I think that's when we got uh, our first VCR. And so I think it was my love for Star Wars that really in motivated me to really learn to read at a much higher level than other typical kids my, my age. So, you know, because I, I really wanted to see the Star Wars movies, but... So, like, what... When I was a kid, they re-released the first Star Wars movie, and I think that was what I saw that because they, they were showing double features, and that's, that's something they don't do that anymore, really. But uh, they had they showed it with a double feature. I saw it with Bambi. Other kids I know they saw it as a double feature with the Dark Crystal, and so I'm guessing that was like in what. 82 or so I guess Empire came out in 80 and I think I saw the re-release of Star Wars maybe I, I guess I don't know it depends on the, when the Dark Crystal was I guess but anyhow um, I know that they had re-released it a few times though because back in the day like I said uh, most people didn't have VCRs so I saw it and then I saw Return of the Jedi but you know like I because I wanted to experience the movies I want you know I, I got the novelizations, you know, of course they had like the, the little, you know, <laughs> let me know if you had this, right, I'm really interested in, and anybody else had the same experience, but they had like, like this little uh, read-along, like with a little record, like a 45 record, and uh, you would you would uh, read along with it, and then you, when you heard that your R2-D2 beep, you would turn the page, right, so, uh, you know, that was cool and all. But, you know, the voices were totally... Was, gosh. Anyhow, so uh, I was reading the novelizations 
when I was like in the first and second grade. I was, I think the first grade is when I read Star Wars A New Hope, um, supposedly written by George Lucas, but it was shadow written by, um, oh crap, what's his name? Uh, Alan Foster? Uh, yeah, I think that's his name, Alan D. Foster. And then in the second grade, I read The Empire Strikes Back novelization by Donald Glute, I think is his name. And I remember at the at the time, like I was reading it when I was in school, and like some kids, they thought I was lying. They thought I was faking it. They're like, "You're not really reading that." And oh no, I really was. So, um, gosh, yeah. And so then I remember when I was a kid, I grew up, and they had these um, uh, these morning matinee movies uh, at the Metro Center Mall. So if you've seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure the mall, you know, the, the so-called San Dimas Mall, that was actually Metro Center Mall in Phoenix, Arizona, and it just recently closed down. They just closed it as of, like, June 30th. That was the last day. So it's kind of sad, but at the same time, for, like, the past 20 or more years, we were calling it Getro Center because it was totally ghetto. Uh, they, they changed management. And so they used to have a cartoon corner. They used to have like all sorts of cool stuff. Oh, oh, and of course, the Suncoast Motion Picture Company. Oh my gosh, that's how so many of us really discovered anime, I guess. Um, they they had a Walden Books and stuff, and then they changed presidents. Whoever decided to run the mall and decided, yeah, you know what? Let's get rid of all these interesting stores, and let's put in like athletic shoes. And who does that cater to? Okay, well, athletes and gangsters. And that's pretty much it. And so you go there, and you see all these, like, these thug-type people walking around, and they're not, you know, they don't have any shopping bags, right? That's a problem, right? And so and you get, like, people being attacked in the parking lot and stuff. And who wants to be a part of that? So we called it Ketra Center. That was closed down. But anyhow, um, they used to show at the movie theater, they had like uh, morning movies. So like they would rerun older movies. And so I saw like, what, Short Circuit. I saw Back to the Future. I saw a bunch of movies that way. Uh, you know, a second time around. That was really cool. And saw movies that had, you know, I missed it in the theater the first time around. But we got to see it as like reruns in the movie theater. So yeah, summertime was always really cool. You know, of course I'd play with my friends or whatever and spend the spend the night at my friend's place. I had one friend who had an Atari 800 computer. <laughs> that was cool. Um, he had a swimming pool as well. Uh, another friend of mine, he had a, a Nintendo, a Super, what is it called, the NES, right? The Nintendo Entertainment System. I had an Atari 7800, so and w which was kind of cool, but you know, different types of games, I guess. And uh, so I would go to his place and play, but his parents, like, it, okay, this is Phoenix, Arizona, and they didn't want them to use the air conditioning even in the summertime. They just had to open up the windows, and it was freaking hot in his house. Very hot. Um, so, yeah, and then what? Junior high and high school. Uh, junior high is when I discovered anime, right? So then I would be able to to, uh, you know, watch a bunch of anime and crap because, you know, school was out. And I got to stay up late, you know, because my bedtime was 9 o'clock. And the Star Trek Next Generation reruns, uh, those always started at 9. So I I was never able to see Star Trek unless it was, like, on a Friday night or something or other. And during the summer, though, I got to stay up until 10 o'clock or beyond that, right? Because that, that was kind of special. And so, of course, I've made trips to the to the comic book store, which, I mean, I, I did that throughout the year, but especially when I got into college and I had my own car, I could go to the comic book store anytime I wanted to, and especially during the summertime. So, and then later, gosh, when I was in college, what, uh, my friend who had gone to DeVry, and he graduated earlier than I did, he moved to San Diego, and he worked for some tech company, and he had his own condominium. 
uh, well, first he had an apartment, then he had a condominium, and then uh, I would go to stay at his place for a couple of weeks in the summertime, and we would attend the San Diego Comic Con, and in the late 90s, you could show up for, like, a, on a Saturday morning, you'd have to wait in line for a while, but you could purchase a one-day pass, and we would spend all day at the, at the Comic Con. Uh, that was really cool. So, yeah, it just became ingrained into me that, you know, summer is the time for, you know, watching movies and reading books and watching anime and, you know, overdosing on video games and all that kind of neat crap. So, even as an adult, when the weather gets warmer, I'm just, I start thinking about anime and, you know, watching more stuff and things. Um... I had a really super experience that something I didn't think I'd ever be able to do. So because of this whole uh, corona crap, uh, the virus is that uh, people... So, okay, here in Japan, they've reopened businesses and things are more or less, you know, going back to normal, I guess. They still have me wearing a stupid mask. <sighs> Um, I can kind of get away with it, actually, because I'm like, look, masks, you're, you're not getting 100% oxygen, you're actually depriving your, your brain of oxygen, and they even showed this on the news recently, that, like, they have, like, they're calling it, like, a mask headaches, people who are just, because you're breathing your own carbon dioxide in, right, and you're not getting a full breath of air, you're getting, like, recycled breath from your, from your mouth, and it's trapping carbon dioxide in, and you keep rebreathing that in, right? And it's not good for you, duh. And I'm like, look, these masks are, they're not gonna protect you at all. And um, so what I was doing is I was, I was kind of pulling it down. I like, I would wear a mask, but I was just like down like this. And then uh, the principal at my school, you know, cause like she realized that like the kids were like, they can't, they didn't even see my mouth for like if I'm saying birthday or 12 right different words and uh, you know, I've got a mask on they, they can't see how I pronounce it so I have this equally useless and particularly silly face shield like this right but like I usually kind of like I got like, like this battle of the planets kind of a thing going right I just need to like tie like a blanket around my 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 neck and like hey look at me I'm gotcha man right so um, it's stupid, but so are masks. So there you go, right? Uh, so anyhow, like I was saying, um, things are coming, you know, kind of returning back to normal, but like at the movie theaters, you have like every other seat is like, you can't sit there, right? It's just so dumb. Uh, but because movie theaters they're 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 really hurting for for customers and such and i think also because like uh hollywood production has been delayed on a whole bunch of movies right because you know all this uh this nonsense um they have released uh, united cinemas in japan has released a bunch of ghibli movies and so i got to see nausicaa the valley of the wind uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of Wind. Yeah. That's what you would call it in English. And I got to see that on the big screen. And that movie came out in 1984. And in America, they released it as Warriors of the Wind. And I didn't know about that until I was in high school. And my sister's boyfriend at the time introduced me to Warriors of the Wind. He had a copy of VHS. And oh god, it was so bad. Like they cut out I mean if okay, assuming you've seen Nausicaa, there's this whole uh, it's like a post-apocalyptic future, like thousands of years in, into the future. And there's like this uh forest, this this toxic poisonous forest that's taking over the world. And there's this whole sub-element to the plot of, like, uh, uh, the Earth is trying to re rejuvenate itself. And it's using this uh, toxic forest to do so. 
and so Nausicaa, she has like this laboratory, and uh, she's she's uh, proving that if you place the spores into non-contaminated earth and soil and water, um, then they're they're not harmful to you, right? So the whole ecological subtext to the movie, the whole basically the kind of the whole plot of the movie was snipped out. It went from like 120 minutes down to like. 90 minutes or something like that. They cut out a whole bunch of, uh, maybe 115 minutes. I don't know what it is. You look it up. Down to like 90 minutes or so. They cut out like a good 20 minutes or so of the movie. And which is just totally stupid. Anyhow, <laughs> the, the, the voice actress, she sounded like Rocky the Flying Squirrel. She's like, Master Yuba, hurry. It was just so dumb. It was so dumb. Dumb. But, and then I saw the fan subbed version in college. And then I saw how f totally freaking cool the movie was. And I was kind of angry because I saw how much they had cut out of the story. It was just kind of outrageous. And, uh, anyhow, so I got to see the movie this past weekend. And I didn't think I'd ever get to be able to see the movie on the big screen and that was just a fantastic experience now what kind of took me out of it at first though unfortunately is that like only the front two speakers in the movie theater were active now like if they had all of the left channel like all the way back and all the right channel all the way back uh that would have helped more of the experience because it felt like I was just watching a really huge TV from far away uh, but after the first 10 minutes or so I kind of got used to it and, you know I think it was a digital yeah it definitely was digital uh, there wasn't any like a uh, crackly or you know dust or anything so it was a digital projection um, of Nausicaa but to see that on the big screen that was a really cool experience and I, I, I kind of picked up a lot more and I hadn't seen the movie in quite a long time. And especially because there was no subtitles. I just uh, kind of just soaked it in a lot more. Really cool. It's one of those, those perks of living in Japan, I guess. So, um, yeah, I really don't watch a whole lot of anime during the year. But during the summertime, though, I'm, I'm a lot more... Uh, motivated to, to watch anime and I I can watch was it one way to know Marnie what was it called when Marnie was there that's a Ghibli movie it's one of the 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 last Ghibli movies that they ever made um that movie I could watch that and not need subtitles I think I had maybe a question one question for my wife after we watched the movie because I saw that in the theater I don't know how many years ago that was but I was able to understand it but when it gets to like science fiction Yamato the the, the, the conversations that they have good luck it's really hard to understand that kind of stuff my, my Japanese level I mean those technical terms yeah it is hard for me but anyhow um I realized I was I was looking in the at the video rental store and yes we do have video rental stores in Japan, thank God because I don't want to bother with a stupid subscription to anything. Um, Gundam the Origin, the Bandai DVDs, they have English subtitles on them, so I rented it, and it's been a long time. It's been, it's been several years since we watched the original series. And it's, it's a prequel. So, uh, of course, I like to kind of, you know, have fun making fun of uh, Gunpla builders. Like, I put it together and I, I put the stickers on myself, see? You know, it's it, it's fun. Gundam models are fun. Uh, what I don't like is that it's just so many Gundams, they, they all start looking the same. And I have had... Gundam. I have had run-ins with Gundam 
I got, uh, got, you know, got the whole Gunpla crowd on my channel in the past because I dared to say I would rather have water slide deck house and I would say look I would maybe build more Gundam models if they would have water slide deck house and um, I shouldn't have to buy aftermarket deck house for these things and it's just stupid and then they get all pissed off at me and <laughs> You know, we don't like painting, we just want to put models together and put stickers on it because we don't really want to challenge ourselves or whatever. So yeah, of, of course I, I do have uh, a lot to say about Gunpla. If you like building them, that's fine. I do too. It's just it's been a very long time. And I do have one project I want to start getting back to and I've kind of tinkered with it a little bit here and there. Anyhow, I digress. Gundam the Origin was really cool. It's a prequel to the original series. And I, I've ended up having a conversation with some friends of mine online about Gundam. So there's so many different Gundam series. And in North America, the first one that ever was released was Gundam Wing. And it's like... It's just the one that everybody calls it the gay Gundam. Because like these little pretty boys and... They all somehow have these Gundams and, you know, they can get shot all the time and they don't get a scratch. And, uh, of course, they just, like, you know, take out, like, you know, hundreds of mecha all by themselves. And it's just that that's, that's kind of boring to watch. Um, for those of you who don't really know a whole lot, robot anime is like oh, it's always been a big thing in Japan of course and Tomino when he made Gundam he he purposely tried to make it so that it's kind of international and he wanted to remove the whole concept of Japanese culture as being um, influencing this 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 show uh, why is it that Japan has so many of these uh, super robot shows with like a, uh, especially a young boy piloting it? Well, if you have seen Grave of the Fireflies, uh, that is a movie to, sh to show anybody who doesn't take anime seriously. Grave of the Fireflies is about the fire bombings of Japan you know, towards the closing of uh, World War II. And imagine a little boy, you know, because the, the self-defenses were completely uh, almost obliterated at that time. The Japanese army uh, was really decimated. And so there was nobody really defending the country very much. And so you can imagine like a young boy's fantasy of somehow gaining superpowers in a way to you know to fight off the invading because the little kids back then they didn't know about the you know all the uh, Japanese war atrocities or whatever right so put yourself in the perspective of like the boy in Grave of the Fireflies and how he'd want to you know d defend his little sister and such and so that that's where the concept of these uh, these robot shows come from um, it's kind of like like a way of defending one's you know earth or whatever from invaders and still having like a sense of security of like being within like a mother's womb and that concept was taken like rather literally with the whole Evangelion series and I've, I've featured Evangelion stuff here in the past uh, on my channel and it's like I like it and I hate it at the same time because it's such a psychotic show it's, it's just it's, it's just I don't know of course I like Nadia a lot more because that's that's just uh, it's the same guy but Nadia was like kind of conceived by Miyazaki and it's just a better show I think anyhow before Gundam came along it was like robots would never get a scratch on them and such and then Gundam was like it kind of merged that idea but with like hard SF so you have like the these colonies these 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 uh, rotating um, 
colony, these tubular uh, colonies, and that orbit the Earth and such, and how they've you know nations have risen up in these these colonies, and and um, the the Zeon they had uh, declared independence from the Earth Federation, and had waged war against the Earth. So with that show, it's like you know the the Gundam might get shot down and. You know, you, you might lose a shield or, you know, lose an arm and stuff. And that is what really, if you look at, I think, I'm not a, like an expert on Mazinger, but Mazinger is always like the shiny robot and uh, doesn't really get battle damaged or whatever, right? But anyhow, there's always, like, just like with uh, Mazinger, though, that the Gundam is like his, the boy's, uh, uh, his father had developed this robot and you know he he's able to somehow take possession of the robot and save the day and such so anyhow if you stick to the Gundam the the UC timeline the Universal Century timeline those are the better shows to watch uh, Gundam the origin though I'd never seen it before and it's, it's a prequel so Gundam is like I'm talking about like the original show. It's kind of like the whole Anastasia story, right? There's like this this uh, legend that um, during the Russian Revolution, Anastasia had somehow escaped, and that's kind of the way Gundam is. It's like um, two brothers. Uh, I'm sorry, brother and sister, Shar and Sela. Um, their father is is assassinated by like this real mafia type family, and well, their their father is assassinated, and their mother is kind of like locked away in a tower, and so you have the brother and the sister. Eventually, they're they're split off because the brother goes to um, get revenge against the family that killed his father, and imprisoned imprisoned <laughs> sorry imprisoned his mother and so he kind of like his his sister thinks that she's dead and so like everybody like her parents are dead her adopted father is dead and she believes her, her brother is dead and everybody is dear to her and has died and so they they kind of go off in separate ways and then they end up on uh opposing sides of the war and so the gun of the origin it really explains like the whole backstory to that which is really fascinating and then it leads right up to the very beginning of the very first tv show now i do have the first show on dvd and so i'm going to explain this okay because i've had um like i said people talked about it now the tv show now, I was lucky to get these. Now, I believe they have been re-released since then, but Bondi Visual, they had uh, re-released these. Or, sorry. No, they released these before Bandai Visual went kaput. I'm sorry, Bandai Entertainment. They're different, but anyhow, both of them failed. Bandai Entertainment, yeah, they, they went kaput as well as Bandai Visual, but I bought these, and then they skyrocketed in price, and then I believe somebody else has has re-released them. So these are the actual TV shows. The actual episodes of the original TV series, except for maybe one episode they did, they decided to get rid of because it didn't really, nothing really of consequence happened to it. It didn't really further the storyline whatsoever. Um, the series had been re-released on uh, as like a three, like a, like a trilogy. So what they did was they, they cut out a whole lot of filler in the TV show because a lot of the shows like it was like like a monster of the week kind of thing like Amuro and, and his Gundam he would have to fight like a different you know uh, huge robot um, and so it kind of I don't want to say bogged down but it gets a little bit repetitive that way they cut out a lot of that and kind of condensed the show into a trilogy of, of movies and so this was released but it's like they've like updated it and they have like these uh, sound effects 
that I don't really care for the sound effects. A lot of it sounds like freaking like Windows 95 theme and don't care for it at all. And in fact, actually, this is cool. I picked this up just because uh, this is <laughs> this is the actual the movies, the the trilogy on Laserdisc. And what's really cool about this is that the the art here is Haruhiko Mikimoto, and he's famous for his designs on Macross, but he did the designs for this. And so, yeah, it has all of the movies, all, all three of those movies, plus it has Char's counterattack. And that's what's cool about laser discs is, I mean, check this out. Like, I'm gonna get the Char's counterattack here. Got kind of like this big huge picture here. It's just so great. And, and this one doesn't come with any, but a lot of them they come with like 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 pamphlets of information and such. Like this has an insert here. It just talks about the movie. But that's just something that is lost with the convenience of DVDs and Blu-rays. Is that you don't have like this this huge thing like you could just fill this all up with beautiful artwork and like those big booklets that often come in these so anyhow anime is cool so much anime sucks so much of it sucks most of it sucks but since there's so much anime that means that there's a heck of a lot that's really great you just have to look for it and as i've said many times before I'm not a fan of like post 2000 or so, um, except for a lot of these uh, remakes, um, like of course like Yamato 2199 and such. So anyhow, I I find myself purchasing anime on DVD and such a lot more in the summertime. And one thing I want to get is the Zillion. DVD box set and I mean like okay so look 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 at this here this is so cool because it looks exactly like something from like the late 80s or early 90s that was like the the pre weathered look to it fantastic packaging I want to buy this just for the packaging it's so cool looking zillion I think it had been released by streamline or so I, I can't remember don't really remember but um, that was a game that was on the Sega Master System and anyhow it looks pretty cool I want to get that I want to buy some other stuff too I'll, whenever I buy these I'll show them on my next you know updates whenever they, they come along so enough of that I guess we should talk about models I guess it's mostly the reason why people come to this so um, let me show you a few things here all right, so one thing I've been working on, or I have resurrected my my work on the 48 scale F8E Crusader, and I've been working on painting all this inside here, and I have been busy drilling out the position lights and such, and I got the the tail light here drilled out as well, so. I started this, I think, in like, like November 2017 or so, and I haven't really touched it since then. Uh, just recently started working on this again. I have been really killing it with my Blackbird. Now, I put down a clear coat. So what I did was I painted this just as before with NATO black XF 69 dude All right yep XF 69 NATO black and I put down some filter paper that I have for excuse me that I have for my uh, my extractor booth and then I sprayed it with the XF77 to give it like a real mottled, filthy look. And unfortunately, since I put the clear 
coat it's really shiny and the model look has been diminished you're not going to see it very much on camera i'm hoping once i put the flat coat down though a lot of it's going to come back hopefully but i found out that uh, there is a replacement uh, for the pitot tube and it's amazing i haven't busted this thing off yet but i might intentionally busted off pretty soon I put in an order uh, I think it was BNA model world there were is that I think yeah that's the company I ordered from uh, Australia right last summer I went to Australia and I ordered this stuff and I had it uh, um, you know taken care of at the the front desk of the the place I was staying at the hotel anyhow um, they also sell stuff on eBay apparently, so that's coming in from Australia. Uh, forget who made it, but of course I'll put it in one of these update videos when the time comes, once I get it. But yeah, I put in this, uh, this sponge here to protect the inside of the, the engine cans here. So yeah, um, I'm ready for decaling. That's going to be super duper neato. I've been working a little bit more on this. Uh, <laughs> I keep coming back to this. This MPC Millennium Falcon. This is that uh, the Rebel Base Hangar set. I'm just going to have the, the ships flying in space, right? In formation or whatever. Uh, doing the, the math talking with this with my friend Gary on Skype you know because he just recently got this as well this actually the Bondi 350 scale Millennium Falcon would be a lot closer to this this is a lot more closer to 350 scale but you know what I, I don't care I'm, I'm gonna go forward with this um, scale be damned I just wanna just keep the you know keep them together the Y-Wings, on the other hand, though, they suck. They're like, they were not made with uh, any reference material at all. The Y-Wings on that, it, they look stupid. The X-Wings look great. The Snowspeeders look pretty good, too, except that they're too big in comparison to the X-Wing. Uh, the X-Wing is, I think, mostly in scale with the Falcon. Um, but, yeah... I don't know. I keep thinking. Well, maybe, maybe in just a few more months I'll get it all together. But I'm not doing it. I'm just. I, I just got so much crap going on. Um, this is done mostly. Uh, I need to weather this and then do a, a clear coat, the the Phantom, and then I'll get back to the uh, the 2020 farewell to the Phantoms, right by Hasegawa. And uh, I'll, I'll get back to those eventually. What else could I show you? The DeLorean. <laughs> I was cutting this so far. I did the gray, right? So I put down masking. And now that the masking is done, I'll spray it with the gray again. And this is something, again, thanks to Franco. Thank you for, for telling me about this. When you put down a color and you mask it, spray it with that color again, because if it's going to seep in, then it'll seep in with the same color, and it'll form a barrier. And then when you do the other color, you have like a really crisp line. So thank you for that. Really good advice. And this is, a, this is what's cool. I mean, what, I've been doing this, like, what, the first video I ever did was like 12 years ago. And it was just my, my nerd room when I, back when I was still living in Arizona. But then I once I did that Honda Fit video, uh, I'm like, look, I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to learn how to do this better. And thanks to everybody who's given me advice um, I've been able to improve so that's great 
would not have been a better modeler if I hadn't been wasting my time on YouTube like this. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, dude, oh my gosh. So the AutoZam is done. The cool thing about this kit is that it comes with masking for the inside of the, the clear parts. And it, it's really unique because Normally, you would put the clear parts from the inside, right? But here, you actually just, it fits down from the top. That's cool. Um, it's its unique. At the very least, it is unique. Okay. Now, oh no. The windshield wiper wants to kind of st stick up a little bit. I don't like that. <laughs> um... So yeah, it has the maskings for the inside of, of the, the clear piece, but not the outside. You're going to have to come up with that on your own, but don't worry. That, that's the easy part to do that. That's not a problem. This is done. I just need to upload the next video. And I, who knows, you might see that before you see this video. Depends. Depends, depends. Um, stand still on the 144 scale flanker well, what I want to do is just because I have been painting this at the same time as the SU 34 and this is the SU 27 right and I had the setback with the the fullback the SU 34 but um, I got that fixed so yeah that that's going to happen at the same time uh, you are going to see another video of the F2 set by Freedom Models. You're going to see this coming up pretty soon. Um, finally, video two. Uh, I've just, I mean, I have been working on it, but it hasn't been really enough long enough to actually make a video out of. Um, and I know people have been asking me about that. I also have started on doing this. Yay. Uh, it's not going to be like a real detailed video. Basically the construction, I've covered it in a previous video. So I'm just going to skip ahead and just do the painting and decaling and stuff. Because that's the only thing that's unique. Mm -hmm. I burped. Excuse me. What else? Um... Yes, that's it. I will. Oh yeah, yeah. So my is um, looking pretty nice. I guess it's only been a few weeks since the last time I did one of these videos, though. I don't. Know, I can't even remember what I put in my last video. I'm such a spaz. Um, so anyhow, um, I did get a couple of new kits and stuff. So I'm going to show you that next. I feel plastic. Hey, hey, hey. Check it out, it's Jazz from the Transformers. Now I know there's probably some diehard Transformers fan who's like, Steve, I mean, Greg, <laughs> you are obviously mistaken, for you see you are betraying your ignorance of what Transformers are. Uh, Jazz is actually a Porsche 935 Turbo, not a 935 baby. Moreover, he has the number four, not the number one. <laughs> yeah. I rest my case. <laughs> well, shut up. Shut up. Yeah, of course, you know, the back spoiler is a bit different and the shape is a little bit different, right? But it's still got the same coloring. And, oh look, it has a decal for the number four. So, screw you, Mr. Transformers nerd. I mean, I'm a Transformers nerd too, but I'm sure there's nerdier nerds than I am. Right. Right. So, I gotta say, there is a... There is a Tamiya 935 Turbo Porsche Martini. And, of course, that one would be, like, identical to Jazz. However, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I've never seen it in person, but it's probably, like, it's one of those older cars in which, like, the underside is, is going to be, you know, 
compromise. I, it's probably, I'm guessing, it's probably one of those those stupid, you know, since it is a much earlier car model by the time, you know, it's probably one of those, you know, like a, has a battery compartment, right, with like a, the, the, the seat is like, you know, compromised and such. I'm probably guessing that's that's what the case is. Oh, oh by the way, this is the, the Japanese packaging here. So it's written in Japanese here. I imagine the instructions. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, look. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, so it says, I like, hear, recommending Italari acrylic paint. Well, that's interesting because I certainly can't get that here in Japan. So it has the instructions in Japanese. And, oh, look. GSI Krios acrylic uh, hobby color. So Mr. Hobby, and then Mr. Color Lacquer, and Tamiya. Well now, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? So here are your, your decal placements and such, and speaking of decals, dude. 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 So, I don't know when this was um, released in Italy, but this is like brand new for Japan. Brand new. And hopefully this is picking it up, but this is really nice. It's got like a gold trim around the martini emblem there. So, yeah, they printed that with gold. The Porsche is gold. Oh my gosh. Holy crap, guys. Do you know how cool that is? Do you know how cool... Do you realize how cool that is? Totally cool. Okay. Now, right here is where the Autobot sign is supposed to be for jazz, but I'll have to think of something. Maybe put it up here instead? I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. It's a very beautiful decal sheet. Like, totally. I do believe that the distributor for Italeri car kits is GSI Krios, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, uh, no, it's Platts. Sorry. Okay. Oh, my gosh. That is nice, guys. That is nice. So, I don't know what, what is that? Is that like a, I don't know what that is. It's weird. Hmm. But, huh. This is definitely not one of those stupid motorized cars, I, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Pretty nice. Oh, look at the detail on that hubcap there. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure what color that's supposed to be, but I'll have to look that up. But, man, this is so cool. That's really cool. And yeah, of course, the spoiler's different, right? Because on with Jazz, um, so like this is like uh, attached on the sides, and Jazz has a spoiler, like it comes up from the middle and it goes across like that. It's not totally accurate to Jazz, but it's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. And, uh, C is for cookie. So, nice, uh, seat belt detail there for the, for the chair. That's great. Very cool, guys. Um, I'm not gonna open it up. Oh, yeah, there's the, there's a spoiler there. But, uh, clear parts are not in a separate... Oh, wait, well, yeah, 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 never mind. They are in a separate bag, so that's nice. Pretty freaking cool. So on the day I went to go see Nausicaa, I stopped by Hobbyoff in Maibashi. And I hadn't been there in a while. And things had changed. Uh, but anyhow, I, I found this. And I actually, incidentally, I had just looked online for this kit so uh, I do know that Tamiya has a A10 in 48 scale 
Hasago only has it in 70 second scale, so we're not going to see this in 48 scale like we have seen some of the other, or many of the other uh, Area 88 planes. So anyhow, uh, this is the A-10 Thunderbolt 2 flown by Greg Gates. And I think his first is, uh, he flies a Skyhawk, and then eventually he, he uh, upgrades to the to the, the A-10. Anyhow, um, this is going to be a rather peculiar camouflage scheme to take care of, right? <laughs> All right, so actually, yeah, so I had I had looked for this kit online and on Yahoo Shopping. It was the only place I saw it, and gougers were wanting like upwards of seven or eight thousand yen for this kit, and I'm like, no way, no way. So I found this for two thousand yen. So yeah, like. It, you what? So I looked on like Amiami, I looked on Hobby Surge, I looked on um, uh, Hobby Link Japan, and nobody had it in stock. But yeah, I found it for 2,000 yen, so good score on that. So this is an older tooling. This is from like 1981 or something like that, so it does have raised panel lines. But other than that, it does have some pretty nice detailing so the unfortunate thing with raised panel lines though is that like if you have to do any sanding you're gonna lose that detail like right away so that that is unfortunate but hopefully this comes together fairly well um, you know as you know I have been doing those other uh, legacy uh, Hasegawa 70 second scale kits that were probably made in like the what I'm guessing probably the, the F-15, the F-14, those those were made probably in the early 80s, I suppose, I guess, I don't know. If you if, if you ever want to find out like the history on any given kit, go to scalemates.com and look it up, and uh, they, you, you could find pretty much, yeah, it most, I have found maybe a very, very few mistakes, but for the most part, though, it's it, it's a good way to to find the, the history on on moldings and retoolings and such of given kits. So this does come with plenty of missiles and bombs and such. So it's got the the sidewinders, the Mavericks, the paveway. Hmm, got a drop tank. So it does seem to have some uh, pretty pretty nice way to put together the engines. That's great. All right, so you assemble that, and then you put the intakes on the back, or uh, on the front, I should say. So the seat itself, so that's, you know, that's, it seems to be better detailed than, I guess, maybe the F-15. This is the Aces 2 uh, ejection seat. I'd probably use one of my, my resin ejection seats. And this does not come with a pilot figure, so there you go. But yeah, that is one busy, busy painting scheme. Clear parts, you get the HUD, and it looks like you got some nav lights, apparently. That's what, that's what those are. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the HUD right there. Decals, fairly decently. Detailed, I suppose. So you get the cockpit instrumentation, which looks nice. And I don't know what that those circles are about, but maybe they're supposed to go on there. I don't know. And look at these, those uh, skulls with candles. <laughs> Reminds me of Grandma's house. And you got the position lights, and yeah, it's pretty decent, I guess. So there you go. So you get on the vertical stabilizers, you get, you know, on the, on the inside, on the outside, on each one. That's where those go. Neat stuff. All right, check this out, guys. Hobby Search got these in stock. And um, 
you know, if, if you buy that stuff from them, you can choose if you want to be on the on their mailing list. And I saw this pop in for the aviation, and I'm like, dude, I gotta get these. These are really cool looking. So I have by Zvesta, I have their MiG-29 kit and their SU-57 kit. All right, so it's got the overall blue interior, right? So this is their um, their MiG-29 fulcrum, and these are interior 3D decals by skillmodels.ru, I guess. Information support. Oh no, no, it's by uh, Quinta Studio. Information is by skillmodels.ru, I guess. Um, you're gonna have to open this up though to see it. So instead of using decals that come with a kit or any sort of photo etch or whatever, you got these 3D printed decals here. Check this out. Neat. So they're super fine detail. Let me just bring this down lower, I guess. That's really cool. And so the color corresponds with aircraft gray. That's nice. And then I'm not sure what it's some sort of decal I guess. I don't, I don't know. So anyhow let's look at the other decals. Alright. And this paint corresponds with the Russian interior, cockpit interior blue. This is Mr. Color 392. That is so cool looking. So I guess these are just like peel off stickers, not really so much decals, but let's, let's take a look here. Let's take a look. Alright, dear customers, thank you for blah blah blah. Christmas crisp crispness of surface details of resin aftermarket parts and easiness of use of colored photo etched parts. At the same time, our detailed parts have more sophisticated embossed details thanks to more complicated surface while being superlative at the quality of coloring itself. Well, isn't that great? Carefully apply glue to a plastic kit part in a uniform thin layer. When using microscale metal foil adhesive, oh, I don't have that. Make sure it is transparent first, then glue the part. Hmm. Metal foil adhesive, well, that's cool. Uh, using the glue tube itself is not recommended, so don't think of it. All right, so here we go. Now that's weird, though. I would think that the whole interior should be blue instead of just the I don't know I'd have to look at the painting instructions but that is super nice guys that is really cool so yeah neat so I guess you have to just cut this out carefully and stick it on it's not really a sticker I guess thicker than traditional Techhouse, we advise you to use an additional adhesive to put it in place. PVA glue, based PVA based glue is recommended. All right, so white glue. So I would, you know, just use some micro crystal clear or something, or Elmer's school glue. Um, micro scale metal foil adhesive or acrylic lacquer, such as Tamiya X22 or Future Pledge can also be successfully used. Well, now. Future. <laughs> it's funny, I was talking to Rebels of Cloud9, he had some dingbats telling him, you're wrong, you shouldn't use future. <laughs> Dude, lots of people use flu future. I mean, what the hell? Some people. Gosh, I don't know. I, I think... Oh, he seems to get a lot more 
crazy people than I do, I guess. I, don't know. I mean, I know he has more subscribers than I do, I, I think. I'm pretty sure his level is over 9,000! And, I don't, I don't know, I'm like 850 or, or 8,500 or whatever it is. Um, kit part B3. Oh, I'm just trying to open this up, but I can't because I'm stupid. There we go. Well, now, kit part 9. Okay. Well, there you go. Interior 3D demo. Hmm. Hmm. Cool. So I guess you don't need to... There is no necessity for carefully dry fitting and painting as opposed to resin parts or putting together multi-layer sandwiches as opposed to colored photo etched parts. Okay. Every instrument dial is already covered with a layer of transparent glossy polymer, providing it with that characteristic glassy look. Oh, that's great. Hmm. Decal softener solutions. Okay, using decal softener solutions is not recommended. So, do you like to soak this in hot water or what? Huh. Alright. Well, it's something that's small. I don't think you really real, would really need to. Um, oh my gosh, it's all in Russian. Yeah, it's all in Russian. I can't read Russian. To me, Russian is moon runes. <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't know. I mean, if any of you have used these, let me know. I don't know if I have to soak these in hot water. I mean... I mean, go ahead and take this out of the bag. I mean, this is this is really cool looking, but let me just take a look here. They do not seem to peel off. Wow, that's so cool. Huh. I don't think you have to, like, cut off the paper or something. Hmm. That is cool. Although this one looks like an actual deck out there. I guess. But, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. The instrument dials. It's got like a bit of a sparkle to it. That's what it's talking about. Look at that. That is cool. That is cool. Neat. By Master Model. This is the 172nd scale Blackbird Pitot Tube. I mentioned earlier. Um, I've... Yeah, I've been uh, recording the segments of this 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 video and uh, over the past uh, several weeks or so, instead of just doing it all at once, right? Anyhow, um, yeah, this is uh, it's got some resin, and apparently it's got two of the resin pieces in case something bad happens, and it's got the little brass rods. Now, as a comparison, this is the 48 scale one that I have, and yeah. Uh, the Hasegawa kit, the pitot tube that comes molded, right? It's actually pretty close to the 48 scale rather than the 72nd scale. So apparently it's a bit over oversized. So, yeah, well, um, that is it for the model stuff. Let's look at some supplies. Supplies! Alright, as far as supplies go, I got something I've been wanting to do for a while. It's a neat little light there on my extractor booth. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? Of course it is. Alright. This is by Semidine. This is epoxy putty plastic uh, for plastic. And uh, you could use it for, of course, plastic modeling, but... Look, check it out. It's like for uh, chipped telephones or you got like a damaged vacuum cleaner and stuff like that. 
Um, I'm gonna try this out. I'll let you know, I guess, how it goes. But you just cut it, and just knead it, and then stick it in place. That's pretty much it. And um, put it in within 10 minutes. It says here. So there you go. And something else. This is Tamiya Light Curing Putty. I saw this in a magazine. It says cures in short time when exposed to light. So you probably want to work on this in the dark. Uh, hardens in approximately one minute under direct sunlight and two minutes under fluorescent light. Wasn't that neat? I'm going to give this a shot sometime. Hmm. Alright, I got this from the model casting website. This is Pebeo Drawing Gum. Alright. High precision masking marker. Okay. Alright. So, um, this is basically like a masking solution uh, with a fine tip. I've never used this before. I saw it used in a video, so I guess I'll go ahead and give this a shot. So as you can see here, it says 0.7, okay, it's 0.7 millimeters, I guess. Point point seven. I don't know. Yeah, millimeters. Hmm. And it's all in Frenchy French. Pouche travers, je magnifique, je coupe le fromage. Oh, hey, okay. I can read pictures, so shake it up. All right. And then. Do this. Come on, jerk. Come on. <laughs> Alright, hold on. Alright, here we go. It's coming out now. Okay, now I have need for this. There we go. Now, let's just use this to fill this in. Oh my. Okay. Let's There we go. Uh I don't remember it being so watery. In the instruction video I saw it seemed to be a bit thicker than this. it's going. Okay, I guess it's working. Uh, Alright, well there you go. And I have seen this, so uh, they were using it in the video to do like a uh, paint chipping and such. So, this is pretty cool, I guess. Alright, look for more use of this in the, the My Shiranui video. It's working more now. Ah, it's much better. Okay. I just needed to shake it up more. There we go. Check that out. Oh, that makes it super easy, guys. Wow. Okay, it's really coming out now. Cool. That is cool. So, yeah, drawing gum. <laughs> Neat. This is a vice. It's a mini vice by Wave. Now I had recorded. I thought I had recorded this. My uh, when I unboxed this package, I can't find the the footage anywhere. Oh well. Anyhow, uh, so it comes with these with these little rubber feet, which makes it uh, 
you know, gently clamp onto something, which is really nice. And check this out. This is really neat. So, like, this is a perfectly smooth glass surface. And if I put this here and then crank it. Oops, hold on. I had to edit it the wrong way. There we go. Uh, there's a suction to it. Now it works on the table, but um, after a while it lets go. It works really well on this glass surface. So, yeah, really neat. So when, when you uh, push the lever here, you see it kind of like uh, collapses in and creates a suction. Uh, so this is neat. I've been wanting to get something like this for a while, and at the Kinds Home Center. They only have like really heavy duty ones and I was just looking for something just light and so there you go, that's that. Lastly, now my Wave Airbrush has served me well. This is the Wave HT231 and I've had this for Six years or so, I guess. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure how long. Um, anyhow, um, the 0.3 millimeter needle just it doesn't work very well. The little cone here that fits around the the needle that goes in inside the the tip. Uh, this is getting all deteriorated, and it's 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 no good. It kind of works for flat surfaces, but for um, for glossy, it's just it creates all sorts of bubbles and stuff. Like, um, let me find it here. Um, I cannot achieve a really truly uh, glossy surface with the airbrush anymore. So this is the DeLorean here. I wanted to have a nice glossy black surface put down and. It's uh, this really disappointed me. So what I'm gonna have to do, because it has like a bit of an eggshell texture to this, I'll have to do some wet sanding and you know proceed with a with a, a purely gloss surface finish. So um, I put the 0.5 millimeter in here. So I will use this, but I'm just gonna be using this as the 0.5 millimeter for you know doing larger paint jobs I guess well I got this this is Mr. Hobby now I did pre-order or not pre-order I, I did try to buy the the wave um, it's I think it's like the HT 111 or something like that and the dumb thing uh, I don't know, the store it was Yorobashi I had a whole bunch of points that I'd, I've been saving up and I wanted to buy my airbrush on Yorobashi and Especially because I wasn't really prepared to make this type of a purchase. Um, they're they're totally out of stock, and after waiting like a week and a half, it's on back order. I just canceled it, and then I got this. This one actually has uh, even higher reviews, which is pretty much the same thing as what the uh, the the wave one I was looking at. But anyhow, this is the Mr. Hobby Procon Boy W A Double Action Platinum. Point three, version two. I'm not sure what version one was about. I, I really was looking forward to going. There was that uh, the double action trigger airbrush, but they no longer make it. They no longer have a double action trigger. I don't get it. But that I, I used that at the uh, one of the hobby shows and I loved it. It was the um, the All Japan Hobby Show several years ago, and unfortunately, they no longer make it. So, oh well. These are other stuff you can do. Here's uh, the drain, the, the the drain and dust catcher. This is the one I have, and then there's this drain and dust catcher too. Okay, well whatever. Um, I, this is my first time opening this up, guys. Now this has like this little thing right there. Isn't it? Air adjust system. Control. Uh, okay. 
Well, I'll get used to this. Let's open this up. Okay. Hmm. Instructions. Neat. Hey, look, everything's in English. Air adjust screw. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oops. Let me point this down. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, ha, ha. Oh, look at this. It has an air hose. Which I actually don't think I need. I mean, if I take this one off. There. Huh. Oh, wait a minute. What? Oh. Okay. This is going to screw on there instead. Cool. Look at this. So, this is interesting. It's got this, um, how do they describe this? The crown cap. And it just screws right off, I guess. Oh, wait, hold on. I think I want to screw it off like this. Now, maybe this is what people use. Like, they, they take it off, and then they can get in, like, you, like super, uh, super fine painting maybe I don't know oh my gosh oh that feels nice oh my gosh that feels nice I just thought of the catch let's open this up wait open this up back here there we go full back oh my gosh this feels so brand new oh my gosh new airbrush so I have to get used to figuring out what I'm gonna do with this maybe this is for like uh, mixing up the paint or something rather right I don't know. Now there's just one type of cap. And that's it. But, you know, whatever. Um, I only take mine off because, like, this one, the wave one, you can have, uh, this, this cup and then you get, like, a bigger cup that I really don't ever really use very much at all. But, regardless, there you have it. So, yeah. New top mushroom tower. Um, I don't know what this is about. About? What is this about, eh? Uh, I, I would not know what this says. Air hose joint, no? Hmm, alright, well, I'll have to look at the instructions, but... Regardless, I now have a new... Airbrush, and I'm happy about that. I'm indeed happy about that. Swanky. Okay, 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 check this out. Alright, so this thing here... Is for the air can, okay? The air can is, uh, this little thing goes on the top, right? And you would open it up this way, and you would close it off this way. That's what this is for. This air hose, you can use it with uh, with this as well. So, yeah, who knows? Maybe um, I, if I buy one of those air cans, I might take my airbrush on the road with my, uh, whenever I go to the in-laws place, perhaps, and then this would, um, I don't know, we'll see. Anyhow, wow, that's cool, that is super cool, now I know what that's for. Neat. And it says right here, uh, for wide area spraying, um, turn the needle stopper to the left, which is like the open it up all the way and keep away more than 10 centimeters, if you want to get in fine. Uh, turn the needle stopper to the right, and, you know, shutting it off mostly. All right, so that it doesn't pull back very much. And it says draw near up to five millimeters. So, like, it gets super darn close. So, yeah, that is super neat. All right, so, um, something it says, the air adjust system here. This is one thing I wasn't so sure about. Spray K 
can be easily adjusted for metallic colors, quick drawing paint, and other paint characteristics by simply controlling only airflow. No pressure adjustment is needed. So you, you would just use this thing instead of, you know, adjusting your PSI on your compressor, apparently. So I'm not really sure exactly which settings you would use, for example, like metal, metallic colors or whatever, but um, interesting. So yeah, there you go. Neat. Alright, so technically it's not a book, it's a magazine. Anyhow, uh, I wanted to show you this because uh, this kind of stuff comes up a lot in comments. Now, this is the 2020 April issue of Hobby Japan. Kind of an interesting, uh, you know, they kind of changed the font there. So, uh, the main article on this is, we love materials, okay? I'm going to show you the kind of stuff that I can get here in Japan. Now, I think probably the the main attraction to my silly modeling videos is that um, you get to see the stuff that I can get here in Japan. Like, for example, you know, I, I got this, this new Mr. Hobby airbrush. Um, it was like maybe, I don't know, like 9,000 yen. Uh, I can't remember. Maybe it was like 9,800 or something like that. And I had like 1,800 points I was able to use it on. So, yeah, um, I do get people asking me, you know, where they can buy stuff that you, they see in my my uh, my videos. And it's like, well, dude, I mean, I don't, A, know where you live, and B, I don't live there, so why would I know if, you know, <laughs> where you can buy that stuff, right? Like, oh, where, where can I get, you know, for example, Mr. Hobby Paints, you know. I don't know. <laughs> so, and by the way, I just got these. These again. I'm starting to get the new stuff. This is the Hobby Aqueous, the the new brand, right? Uh, the reformulated. This is the twenty and thirty. Okay. Anyhow, um, we love material. Okay, so this is just a neat article on uh, different stuff here. Now they got. Um, uh, Plabon, right? This is a plastic plate. Now this is kind of cool. This is made by Wave. This is regular, you know, I, for example, I've got this stuff by Tamiya. Plow plate. I use this stuff a lot. This actually has, like, the grid lines on it. I think that's, that's pretty cool. This is, like, super, super thin, this stuff here. And uh, right here you got some, some, like, a plastic plate cutters oh crap man that's like 9,000 yen now I have seen some cheaper ones but I don't I don't know who I think it was Tommy who makes them um what is this oh it's god hand <laughs> that's why it's so expensive <laughs> they really make great crap though I gotta admit All right and this here is showing you how to like, you know, if you want to twist, I guess you can, or melt it with a candle, this is how you can accomplish rigging, and I've never done that, and I, I'm kind of scared to do that, but, um, here it's just talking about how you can use some plastic plates to detail up, even your Gundams and stuff like that, and, you know, I, 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 I do make uh, fun of Gundam stuff, but really, it is an art to make Gundams look really, really nice, and you can do it, right? I'm just making fun of the people who, uh, they just stick them together, they don't bother painting it, and, and that's cool, but the ones who get arrogant about it, and they're like, oh, well, I demand that, that you respect me like everybody else, that kind of stuff, and, you know, put me on a pedestal of, of like, an accomplished modeler. I just, you know, sorry, I'm a snob. But there are some good, really good uh, Gundam modeling channels out there. Strider Prime, uh, I've mentioned him several times. And actually, I think he, he watches my videos sometimes, so. Yeah, alright, so here's a whole bunch of putty. 
All right, now this is Tamiya Basic Type Putty. Uh, Mr. Putty, Mr. White Putty, and Mr. White Putty R. Uh, I don't know what the difference is. And this is okay. This is the stuff that that the, the finishers. You you I only see this on like the higher end modeling shops that carry this this line of product. Um, I don't really see this too often. You have to go to like uh, you know like for, like Volks or Yodobashi, right? If you're in Tokyo, they would carry this stuff or some of the higher end stuff. I think like Mulsan in uh, Maibashi City, which is close to where I live, they they carry that. But uh, most of the run-of-the-mill hobby shops don't carry this stuff. Uh, Mr. Dissolve Putty, and you know, I've probably seen that in my, my videos quite a lot. I mean, this guy, he's all spazzing out, right? And he's like, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well, basically, what he's 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 being silly, but he's he's got a he's got a, a paintbrush here, and he's a, he's texturing this, right? He's just kind of dabbing on the, the putty, right? So, and these are all the lacquer-based putties that you can add some lacquer thinner to it and thin it out, okay? Now, uh, Leona's Workshop, as she has mentioned, this is polyester putty. Now, this is made by Wave, and then this is the, the Tamiya here. Um, again, here's more finisher stuff. Um, I've never used polyester putty. Guys, let me know. If you're into sculpting, I know Franco, maybe you can, if you're watching this, you can answer my question. But let me know, how, how does this stuff work? I mean, what, um, I don't know. I mean, like, for example, um, uh, uh, Leona, she uses this on uh, on her, her garage kits, her resin garage kits for sculpting and stuff. Do let me know, okay? So apparently it turns yellow. Weird. Now, Millie Put. I actually have Millie Put. And it's funny because I didn't think I could ever get this in Japan. And, like, for example, um, here is now uh, Mark, uh, uh, Event Horizon Models. He, he sent this to me about a couple years ago. This is Millie Put. And. Well, this is great. I, this is coming to good use. I didn't know I could get this in Japan, but apparently Wave does this. They um, they they sell it here in Japan. Now this is uh, Millie Put Epoxy Putty, and this is High Grade S. I don't know what the High Grade S is. This is super fine white. Maybe that's I don't know. Maybe that's what this is. I don't know. So they have so all these different types of wave putties. They have a uh, Tamiya putty. They've got Mr. Hobby putty. Okay. And Simidine makes putty as well. Now this is for repairing doors and stuff, for like uh, using it on, on wooden parts. Now a viewer who was looking at my Nadia uh, builds, uh, I asked him, what should I use? to fill in the gaps in her arms and such. He recommended I use this. So I actually bought this, but I haven't used it yet. Uh, this is uh, for plastic, and that's what this is. And actually, uh, so this is the, the camcorder that I'm using right now is what uh, Gyrus gave me. And the little, um, you know, like where, where it screws onto the, the 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 stand, right? I've got it on this 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 super duper neato um, uh, arm. Well, the the metal part just kind of busted on the bat on the underside of the camera. So I used that putty, this stuff here. Um, I puttied it up and I, I stuck that that little thread thing in there, and it's it's solidified and it works just fine. I'm able to take it off. Of, uh, of the stand and put it back on with no problems and that is super duper nice um, just talking about if you want to fill in the parts I guess with epoxy putty um, so you got some big gaps here and so that that's what you want to do 
All right, depends on what model you're you're dealing with. They, they didn't show what it looked like beforehand, but apparently it's got these these nasty uh, um, gaps here, and they they filled it up and they smoothed it out, and it looks a lot nicer. You know, once I once you paint it, it's gonna look nice. Now um, this is the Modi Modi. This is the so for figures. Echo Putty. That's interesting. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure, sure what Echo Putty is all about. Um, Tomo. You know, this is by Gaia Notes. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Now I have this. This is basically just colored super glow. It's not really putty, and that's what I was using on the the Katinga, and I got so frustrated. Because it wasn't working out right as I was hoping, and that, that's, that's what these things are. They come in different colors, which is cool, but they're basically it's just super glue. It's not really putty. Magic sculpt. Now my friend Gary in Pennsylvania, he is a sculptor and he swears by this stuff. So it's you know what it's got the resin and then the hardener. So apparently I can get this in Japan. I did not know I could get that in Japan. I'll have to take a look at that sometime. But yeah, that's what he swears by. Um, it's got an interview here by the people at Semidyne. Let's skip that. Um, here is the line of uh, the colored, you know, putty, but it's really just a uh, um, super glue, pretty much. And yeah, here's the magic smooth resin and the hardener yeah weird huh all right now this is Oyumaru now this is uh as I think it's made by Gaia notes it's the same thing as Oyumaru um, but yeah this is it's just clear plastic putty dip it into some super duper hot water and you can mold it and you can make molds okay and this is using light curing putty I recently I got that, right? Um, I haven't used it, but here you can use it under fluorescent lights, etc., etc. So yeah, and here's like a, the the injection pin marks, uh, which are unfortunate, but it says here you just dab the uh, the light curing putty on there, shine the light, and then smooth it down with sanding. That's that's cool. All right, now this is when you're making molds. Now this is the uh, silicone by Wave. Uh, the silicone I have is is made by um, Mr. Hobby, but it doesn't matter. So you can just do two part molds that way. This is the Wave Resin Cast EX. This is the stuff that dries. It, it it's it cures like super fast. It's crazy. I was not expecting that to to harden so quickly. All right. Um, this is a cool thing, like it shows you how to make your own Gundam head, like a large scale Gundam head. So, what else? This is talking about 3D printing. And I wonder if there is, oh, what is it called, Thingiverse, I think? I wonder if there's a Japanese version of Thingiverse where... Japanese people can uh, upload their designs for like you know uh, Macross, Valkyrie pilots, or whatnot. I don't know. So that's uh, the April. Okay. Now going into July, Hobby Link Japan. Um, I was going to show you this real quick because oh, this is really awesome. This is the Ikaruga. Gosh, check that out. Oh my gosh. Now Jairus, you know what this is, right? You're into shmups. So, oh man, I played this on the, on the well first in the arcade, and then I played it on the Dreamcast when it came out. Oh my gosh, that is so cool, dudes! All right, so blah 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 blah. blah. This is a video game uh, uh, build contest, is what they did here. Anyhow, where's the article I wanted to show you? Oh yeah, this is cool. That is cool. This is the the cruise chaser blasty. All right, now here we go. Now you got God Hand 
side cutters here. I got the god hand. Um, the, the the sanding um, sanding sponges, and I've got those. I've got a bunch of those. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Okay. So I got different files. Got some cutters. Uh, it looks like what is that ceramic blade? Maybe I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, micro ceramic blade. You need to get one of these if you don't have. This is a part separator by Wave. This is really cool stuff. This really comes in handy when you're working with uh, snap kits. Especially like, you know, Bondi kits and such. This is the high grade glue that you see me using sometimes. It dries clear. Tamiya Cement Accelerator. This is for using it with their, um, um, their uh, uh, CA glue, but it's, it's just, it, it dries real fast, but it, it doesn't really, it becomes more brittle. It doesn't really uh, connect very well. But oh well. So yeah, this is showing you just on a some Gundam gym model or whatever. And of course here are the new aqueous colors. So um, I guess that's it. Uh, I think that's it. Oh yeah, this is cool. This shows you a whole bunch of stuff. How to buy crap online. So, hobby. Huh. Now, Amiyami, I buy stuff from them. Of course, here's this Hobby Link Japan. Now, they have two different sites. They have a Hobby Link Japan, the English site, and then they have the Japanese site. Um, the other one I use is um, was it was it 1999? Um, what are they called? Um, <laughs> Hobby Search. That's what they're called. Yeah, here we go. This is Hobby Search. Um, Metricani. Yeah, this is cool. This is where people can sell their own stuff, right? Um, Tam Tam. I've never... I've, I've been to their site. Their, um, their store that's in Akihabara. I've never been to their, uh, their online site. Yellow Submarine. Sudagaya, this is for uh, used stuff. Their, their stores are pretty awesome, actually. I have used this online. I bought, I think it was a Nadia kit, I think. I don't know. Um, uh, M's Plus, yeah, that's right. And then um, there's some other ones, too, though. Where's Digitamine? That, they're actually on Yahoo Shopping. Uh... Alshima has a Yahoo shopping page, and so does so does um, Tamiya. This is a uh, Rakuten. Yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, the, oh, sorry, it's Post Hobby. That's what it is. Well, I guess that's it for the magazine. I mean, I'm not going to sh show you the whole thing, but um, just wanted to show you all those uh, different parts and supplies and such. So, as I have said before, 2020, this is the final year for the Phantom in Japan. So, of course, more Phantom love is sure to ensue on this channel. Um, lots of really great kits coming out. And especially the Fine Molds kit is going to be coming in. That is, that, that is really exciting. Um, so on the horizon though, you know, as, as, uh, especially since I live in Japan, I'm really fascinated with the Japan Air Self-Defense Force. Uh, they are going to be releasing a Mitsubishi F3. Now the Mitsubishi F2, of course, is basically like a modified F16, right, with a wider wingspan and different intake shape and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyhow though, check out this article. Japan's, uh, so this is uh, from April of 2019, 
Um, I'm talking about the uh, midterm defense review quietly revealed that after years of hesitation, Tokyo has decided to press ahead with development of its own domestically designed 6th generation Mitsubishi F3 air superiority stealth fighter. Rather than purchasing an additional foreign stealth design to supplement its growing fleet of F-35s. Okay. And, of course, that's really cool. And now, this is what we see is just like a... It's just a mock-up, I guess. I, I don't know if that's like a finalized design or just a prototype design or whatever. But, um... So, the new F-3 jets would then begin replacing Japan's over 100 home-built Mitsubishi F-2 single-engine fighters. Heavily upgraded and overpriced F-16s. Okay, well... Well, there you go. So, well, that's cool. Now, at the same time, though, I was hoping, and there was there was talk of the YF-23. Now, or the XF-23, whichever, right? So, this article even mentions that the concept of a hybrid of the F-22 airframe with the F-35's more advanced avionics seemed particularly attractive, but the bill for such a plane remained extremely high at an estimated $215 million per aircraft. Japan also courted Grumman, which decades earlier developed an XF-23 Black Widow stealth fighter and British BAE, uh, British Air, what is that? Aerospace? I don't know. Uh, which is currently developing the Tempest stealth fighter. Either option would have meant committing to build more fifth generation fighters instead of looking ahead to sixth generation designs such as the Tempest or and, and the European FCAS. So I guess hmm, that pretty much censors it. I guess there's not going to be a resurrection of the uh, the YF-23, which is really a shame. Now, um, check this out. Hold on. Now, check this out. I did, I got this last year. Dragon repopped the YF-23 kit. And apparently it's going for a lot of money. It's already kind of out of print by now. Well, um... Hasegawa had done a uh, JASDF F-22 Raptor kit, and I thought that was really, really awesome looking. And I was thinking, like, what if I did, like, a, a what-if build, right? Like, if, uh, if, 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 they, if they would have invested on resurrection, resurrecting the YF-23 and uh, putting it on the, the decals and such to make it a, a Japanese fighter. Since I have a bunch of extra decals, I probably could get away with that, I, I suppose. So that's something I was, I was considering doing um, the past uh, several weeks or so. And I, I'm not going to start on this anytime soon because I, I certainly have plenty of other uh, uh, projects to take care of at the moment. But, I don't know, what do you think? You know, doing a YF-23 like this and doing it with the, the, the Japanese oceanic camouflage. That would be pretty cool, I think. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I, uh, I've i been bouncing that idea around in my head for uh, a couple of months. Now, as it is, this kit, you can do it as uh, two different uh, paint schemes. Right, so you got like the like the, the the dark one. It's like a slate gray slash black, and then you got this other one with like a very mild um, uh, camo scheme to it a little bit. So anyhow, let me know what you think. Here's your dose of stupidity for the month. Thomas Happy. <laughs> this this is complete nonsense. Okay. Uh, I'm sure, you know, most of you probably don't read Japanese, but this is just garbly gook. I mean, it's like the cat walking across the computer keyboard. This is just nothing.
It's completely stupid. I don't know. So, gosh, yeah, total idiot. Now, um, got some more stupidity here. And uh, so, actually, this is not on my channel. This is on uh, Rebels of Cloud Nine's channel. <laughs> he, he he let me borrow some of these. So, as you may know, he is Canadian, and he says the the word decal. He he says decal because that's just the way Canadians say it. I mean, at, at least a lot of Canadians I have seen online have as they they pronounce it that way. The first time I heard the word deck, or I'm sorry, uh, dickle, or, or I'm sorry, deck. How do they say it? Deckel. Yeah, they say deckel. It was um, what's his name, Sid from Hobby Link Japan, the the Gunpla TV. This is like years ago, and when he said deckel, I'm like, well, that's kind of a weird. I mean, well, whatever, right? So, I looked it up. And I found out, well, that's just the way Canadians say it, right? I mean, it, it, this information is available online. But anyhow, so this is on one of, um, this is one of his uh, Rebels of Cloud Nine's videos. Peter Car Karen? Yeah. Peter Karen says, I'm sorry, but I just have to. I am also a Canadian and have never in almost 50 years called them decals. <laughs> Uh, hearing your pronunciation of decals makes my brain itch. The word decal derives from decalomania, which is a transfer of, in this case, images from one media, paper, to another, the surface of a model. The proper pronunciation, therefore, is decals, not decals. I like watching your videos, but it is easy to miss a lot with my volume muted. <laughs> so... <laughs> I responded, I can only imagine you going to Boston and telling everyone it's clam, it's not clam chowder, it's clam chowder. They laugh at you and tell you to get lost. I'm not even sure why I'm bothering to respond to your stupid comment, because nine times out of ten, guys like you will leave dumb comments like this and aren't clever enough to figure out the notification system on YouTube. However, ignorant people pretending to be smart is a pet peeve of mine, so here I go. Your brain is itchy because you are a doofus. Congratulations on looking up the origin of the word decalomania. However, your comment is a big self-own. You copy-pasted the definition complete with what is in the parentheses without even having the IQ to process the contents of within. It provides two pronunciations, one with a short E and one with a long E. Since it's likely you haven't a clue as to what a short vowel or a long vowel is, let me explain. The short E is like in the word elephant, while the long E is that in evil. The short vowel E is that of the original French pronunciation of decalomanie. Notice the funny thing over the E? That's called a schwa, indicating a short vowel E sound. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary pro provides not one, not two, but three acceptable pronunciations of the word decal, making it very clear, even to pinheads such as yourself, that there is a unique Canadian pronunciation of the word. Therefore, his pronunciation is fine, and you are being a dingus. <laughs> Here's another stupid comment very similar on, on the same subject here. Outlaw Flyer 78 says, pretty cool, but let me get this straight. It's pronounced decal even by the manufacturer even by the manufacturer and pretty much all over the world. But Canadians want to make it their own. And he not there, it's there. T H E I R. There is in like over there is like a location. He can't even can't even spell right, right? Uh, Canadians want to make it their own and say de decal, which sounds so damn hideous. Your paint looks way too thick. Much love from the USA. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Passive aggressive much? So I basically paraphrased his stupid comment. You loathsome Canadians are stupid and the way you pronounce the words is damn hideous. Much love from the USA. <laughs> What a stupid jerk. Oh my crap, these people. These people. These people are stupid. Alright, speaking of uh, stupid, 
it's weird like uh, I would sometimes I have like these comments that it shows up as held for review and then when I go to the I click on the tab and there's nothing there it's weird and then this one just suddenly surfaced actually two of these suddenly surfaced uh, the first one is from five months ago all right now the uh, it was a comment I put it was about congratulations on brexit at last the UK now it's time for the UK to forge its own destiny etc etc and Hamish McSporin said wow you are a racist small-minded prick with little Englander syndrome um, he should have put a period there unsubscribed yeah, it's funny because like you know, these p these twits they feel the need to like say that they've unsubscribed it's like oh no please oh, oh come back oh oh I'll do anything oh please don't please just don't under unsubscribe from me meh, meh. what okay I think that England the people of England should elect their own officials their own legislators to create laws for the best pit interest of the people of their own country instead of like way over in Belgium where these unelected officials who are they're just a bunch of uh, rich oligarch kleptocrats who couldn't care less about the people of England who basically dictate to the country what their law is okay or not England, but UK in general. Oh, okay. Shut up, racist! Shut up, racist! <laughs> How is that racist? See, this this is exactly why the the Labour Party got trounced so badly. It, it, if if you can't actually challenge people on their ideas, other than just calling them racist, then sorry, but you're stupid. So, okay. Now this is another one. Actually, I had. This is a year ago. I had featured this on my my channel. Some idiot said, "OMG, who have the directions? Use them." Couldn't even use a period, right? Just like this Hamish guy can't use proper punctuation. And so I'm like, you know, quit being an asshole, right? And this gay, this Jay Gatsby guy says, "I don't think they were being that rude or assholeish. I think it was criticism, but definitely not being an asshole." What? How could you say that, OMG, you have the directions, use them? You're basically calling somebody stupid. Just because I had missed a step. And I have seen people building stuff, and they, they, they skip a step, and then they, oh, they, they go back, and they fix it. I, why, why am I going to, like, you know, reach over to my keyboard and tell them, oh, you have the instructions, use them. You know, you're just being an asshole if you do that. So this Jake Gatsby, well, whatever. This guy's a dickhead, too stupid. Alright, now let's look at some nice comments. <laughs> okay, now this is the the I was showing the putty with the, the my Shiranui resin figure. <laughs> Undamned said, you can putty my top any day, Steve. <laughs> so His name is Brian, right? He's a friend of mine. Um... <laughs> that's what I said. That's what your mom said too, Brian. <laughs> the truth is out. Maya's my mom. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've known him for close to... Actually, no, over 20 years, I think. But, yeah, about about 20 years. We, we've been friends. He's he's super neat guy. <laughs> also on that, that same post, <laughs> Jody said, Oh, she is looking fine. Don't forget to add that dastardly woo-flu mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right oh my gosh and uh here's here's some more uh more more nice comments here check this out this guy Zeno the inked and nerdy vapor um yeah okay I will say this I have never smoked in my life my mom smoked when I was a little kid and then she stopped cold turkey and became a voracious anti-smoker. Um, I have never felt the 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 desire to ever smoke in my life. I applaud people who turn to vaping instead of smoking because at least you know they they come in different smells and you know uh, flavors or whatever. 
Um, I, I have to say that uh, vapors are being shat upon big time, and I'm sure Big Tobacco is behind it. Uh, they they are lobbying lobbying and uh, all over the world, and they're they're trying to stop vaping because they want people to be, uh, you know, using a smoking smoking tobacco and stuff instead. Anyhow, this guy, <laughs> he's he went through and like commented on a whole ton of of videos all at once. It's pretty great. <laughs> so um, he reached out to me on Twitter, and I was talking to him a little bit on Twitter. So. At least some people follow my Twitter account. I, I think most of the people are just like follow backs or just like bots or something. I don't really get a lot of engagement on Twitter at all. Um, <laughs> Tommy boy. <laughs> this video reminds me of going to the swimming pool and all the kids rubbing my hairy legs. <laughs> and so I said, me too, do yours turn blonde in the sun? <laughs> That's when I learned about roaches. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden. Oh god, don't get me started. Pervert! Alright, something else I have been working on lately. Um, oh, actually, first of all, check out my shirt. Okay, so this is for you, Nick. Uh, you, he had uh, uploaded a video um, talking about Johnny Mnemonic. It was kind of a joke video. And I told him I have a t-shirt of Johnny Mnemonic. And I bought this when the, when the movie came out back in, what was it, 1996 or something rather? And it says on the back here, Johnny Mnemonic. So, anyhow, I'm wearing this for you. Okay, so, um, assuming you're watching the video. I don't know. Let me know if you've seen this. Okay. Um, because I am spaz, as you all know, um, and I just can't stop starting, stop starting new projects. Stop starting? Yeah, okay. I keep starting new projects, and that's something I, I, I need to stop doing that. Because I need to finish projects before starting new ones. Anyhow, I am spaz, um, as I mentioned. So, um, one thing I have been doing, today at least. Check this out, guys. Alright, so. Uh, okay, I've been clear casting a bunch of stuff. And I figured, hey, you know, if I get to whip up a whole bunch of, like, clear resin, um, it'd be nice if I could just do a whole bunch all at once, right? So, uh... Two years ago, I think it was the June-July update or whatever, uh, in 2018, I was talking about the comparing the Mobius versus the Ravel um, uh, kits, the 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 Cylon. I'm sorry, the 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 Battlestar Galactica Colonial Vipers and how the 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 kit by Ravel has these these cool leg computers, right? Now this is something that was in the show. the The actual movie props were um, they were like uh, Sharp or Casio. I forget. They were slide rolls, slide slide roller computers, and they had them strapped to their leg. And I thought that was really awesome. Anyhow, um, even though maybe the the real thing didn't light up, but I think it'd be pretty cool to light these up. So I want to cast this in clear. So what I want, what I have been doing is uh check this out so the the gray one here is the Ravel, and then this is the mobius one okay i have uh inserted this is uh i got this on hda model works and let me put this in here into place so i put a little smd here okay and let's see if i can touch this there we go now i'm gonna add some more resistance to this to you know calm it down a bit but anyhow I'm gonna have this lighted somehow what I want to do is stick this on here and have it as like a lighted uh, leg computer right you can kind of see it already just the way it is kind of lights up slightly just the the light shining through there but anyhow um yeah I think that would be pretty cool I think that would be pretty awesome to do. And in fact, okay, if I can clamp these guys together here, now I can get them to work right. Okay, clamp, put the clamps on them. There we go. There. I can make the little buttons light up on it. I think that'd be pretty awesome looking, I think. 
I think that would be pretty darn freaking cool, I think. I hope you believe so, too. Anyhow, yeah, it's just an idea, and uh, it should work out just fine, I think. And if I clear cast it, then I can do the same thing for the Mobius pilot figure as well. So, yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we've had a four-day weekend in Japan. It was supposed to be kicking off the 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 Olympics, and of course that's not working. That's, that's not happening at all. Um, I went to uh, Niigata City, and we went to the aquarium. And uh, you might not know this, but Niigata is kind of a bit of a hub uh, for like the the, the manga and anime um, industry. So, like for example, Rumiko Takahashi, she's from Niigata. Um, she, you know, she did the uh, Urusei Yatsura and Lam and Inuyasha and all those types of uh, 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 titles. There's a guy from Gainax who is from Niigata as well. So Niigata is like the the northern coast, like basically like straight up from Tokyo along the north coast of Japan. And um, so I saw that they had actually it's a manga university. I mean, okay, ch check this out. This is kind of kind of cool, I guess. So, um, I went to, it's, it's in a, like a shopping arcade, and I went there at night after hours, but I, I took this video, and, uh, just poking around, and I saw that, and I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, there was also, uh, a manga and anime museum, and I was hoping there would be a lot more historical stuff, but most of it was, like, I went in there, I paid the admission to go in there, and I'm like, Psh, I don't know what any of this stuff is. None of it interested me. It was all this modern anime and manga and stuff, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, there's Kaon. I know what that is. Kaon's kind of cool. And then, um, uh, they also had, like, a little thing of Gainax, and they had the Wings of Honey Amaze. They had a little, uh, thing about that, and that was kind of cool. Um, because, again, one of the, I forget his name, but the guy, not, not Hideaka Anno, the guy from Evangelion, right, but it was one of the other guys, he did the Fooly Cooly and, uh, Gunbuster 2, right, um, that guy, he's from Niigata, so, anyhow, it was pretty cool, you, I will do a video on that, um, I'll have that uploaded sometime soon, but anyhow, I need to finish this video, this is like close to two hours, or maybe over two, year, two hours by now, thanks for watching. So, as always, live long and prosper. May the force be with you, and so long. Thanks for all the fish. Goodbye.